Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at another devlog for the next major update, and this one's kind of surprising, because usually this is a type of devlog we get near the end of the cycle when it comes to the update. Maybe it means that certain things are moving along at a slightly more rapid pace, or maybe they just decided to do things differently, who knows. Anyway, uh, there's a bunch of new maps that are coming in, not just for ground, but also for air. Some of them you'll be familiar with, as they are really going along with the winterized version of maps, which I think is really cool, and also some aviation stuff. So let's get into it. The first map is the Pyrenees, and the Pyrenees is obviously a beautiful area. If you've never been, uh, I would highly recommend it. Basically, it's the mountain range which is between France and Spain. It is absolutely beautiful uh, to just go and see and walk or drive around, whatever you want to do. It's just absolutely fantastic. And it's being recreated in a way in War Thunder. Basically, they're adding in an air map which uh, is based around it. Uh, you obviously have some little villages here and there. You have some beautiful uh, bridges. You have a big castle and also just some massive meandering roads. The only issue um, I'm worried about is that this may become another one of the uh, maps like Canyon, where at the mid-tiers, this is a large EC map. And uh, I've got to be honest with you, that Canyon map that they added, that is the first map ever when it comes to War Thunder, I have banned when it comes to the game. I cannot stand being at 4-0 and having uh, to uh, basically fly for 20 minutes to not find anybody and then wonder what am I doing with my life, right? Might as well just read books at that point. And I'm hoping that the Pyrenees is not like that. I'm hoping that there is a version which is designed for a small area and then a version which is designed for a large area. So therefore you can have um, different uh, setups for different um, for different things. You also have some kind of like rocket or plane in one of the pictures. I have no idea what it is. Um, not going to zoom and enhance. Obviously, it's an F-35, so we don't even have to think about it. <laughs> the next map is Subversk 13, but a winterized version of it. Uh, looking at the pictures, there doesn't seem to be anything different. Uh, just a nice snowy effect, so therefore the terrain will act slightly differently uh, compared to before. With the changes that they made to wheeled vehicles more recently, having winter conditions on a lot of maps um, does not uh, inherently make them, you know, harder to play anymore uh, for a lot of vehicles, just slightly different in the general friction areas. So I think winter versions of maps are really cool to see. You know, I've talked about it for a long time, the idea of seasonal gaming uh, for different maps is really, really cool. And uh, for this stuff, it's uh, just really nice. I mean, it says the winter version of one of the most mysterious locations in War Thunder. Russian winter has come to the abandoned town, but the air raid warning is still heard. Disturbing news about the missing people can still be heard on the police wave, and military convoy convoys still block the town. That's one of the cool little, um, I suppose, Easter eggs of Seversk. If you go up to the little police cars, you can actually hear the radios um, <laughs> when, uh, when wandering around, so... It's just really cool. But I hope this uh, continues a trend. You know, it makes camouflages a lot more useful. And also at the same time, it means that you can take something which is relatively, you know, the same and make it and give it a bit of variety to it. With Poland, they tried to change a few areas. And I think in general, Poland, the winter version is better than the other one because it forces more people into the town. But they still have to deal with that northwest area. Um, because it's uh, it's basically just a uh, spawn camping spot. They've also made a snowy Ardennes map, uh, which is pretty cool, and it'll be interesting to see uh, which version of Ardennes that they use for this one, because technically there's like four or five different Ardennes maps, uh, depending on which one you're having a look at. I wonder if we'll get all of the different ones having snowy conditions, or if it'll just be the one which is centered around the town. Whichever one it is, um, the pictures themselves look really nice, and I don't think it will change the map uh, play too much. Uh, it doesn't seem like, at least in the overview, that it's changed any of the terrain or stuff, so I think it should be fine. It just means that flanking will be a little bit harder, since your tanks will be a little bit more exposed to the winter conditions, uh, but, you know, the map should play exactly the same. Then the last one is the Maginot line in winter as well. So taking Maginot, cutting out some of the trees and making the rest wintry. 
it's going to just be <laughs> this one's just going to be a massive blob um, when it comes to the snow, like it's it's going to look really weird, especially on the eastern side of it. Uh, but I generally feel like once again, this is a good thing. You know, it just gives a little bit of variety to the maps that we already have, and we can just keep pushing forward with that. You know, we can keep having a bit of fun, and we can keep uh, doing well with it. I think generally, um, this um, is positive. Uh, for the game uh, getting these winter versions of maps I think at this point with so many new additions to the game might be worth uh, revamping the map rotation filter whether giving it a few li more likes and dislikes or maybe a few more bans and also at the same time being able to ban a map in its entirety so if you don't want to play let's say Magino Line you shouldn't have the winter variant of it just pop up um, anyway, because, you know, they're, they're fundamentally going to play pretty much the same way. It's not like Poland, which does have some changes to it. It looks like these ones are just carbon copies with uh, slightly different vegetation levels, as they should play basically the same, and therefore, you know, you're going to dislike it uh, as much. So that that's something I would at least think about uh, for this setup. Also, one of the issues with having a ton of snow maps is um, Cass is going to be even more deadly because there's a much higher contrast between the standard tank and also the ground. So I would personally want um, winter camouflages to be made easier to get. I think that would be incredibly important to do. Um, but overall, it's just really nice to see these. Um, I, I've asked for stuff like this for a long time, and it's finally nice to see something uh, that I've imagined in my head come to fruition when it comes to the game. As always, though, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Forge, Siegebreak, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, and also Sem Arslan, Wilkski, uh, Uncle Bean, Derek R., Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.